welcome back to my channel it is me arunandrea raj and today we're gonna do maths objective spree part three where we're gonna discuss question 21 to 30. all right let's get going all right question 21 to question 22 as you see here i've already solved them but let's see how i did it so question 21 is a direct question because we do not need to find the number sentence from the given paragraph or sentence because the number sentence is already given there and we just have to solve it. So let's see how I solved it. So 72.10, we just have to minus with 13.08 and then the subtraction total will be 59.02. And then we have to add 4.15 to the subtraction total here and then we will get the answer 63.17 we just have to subtract and add as per normal so we get the answer is b 63.17 all right let's move on to question 22 the instructions are diagram 7 shows the times in two cities on the same day in the question state the time in sydney Australia when the time in Kuala Lumpur is 2100 hours. All right, as you see here, this is a short quick info. So Sydney is plus two Kuala Lumpur, which means the time is two times faster than Kuala Lumpur, two hours faster. So as you see here, Sydney is 6.15 p.m. and Kuala Lumpur is 4.15 p.m., which means Sydney is two hours faster than Kuala Lumpur. So if Sydney is two hours faster than Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur should be two hours slower than Sydney. So now they ask, what is the time in Sydney if the time in Kuala Lumpur is 2100 hours? So Sydney is two hours faster than KL, which means we have to plus two hours in order to find the time in Sydney. So we will get 2300 hours in Sydney. And here we go, the answer is D. 2300 hours. Alright, let's go to question 23. Alright, moving on to question 23. So they give us an incomplete number sentence here and they asked us to find the missing number in the box. So 10.12 divided by 8 equals to 6.7 minus hmm, unknown number here. So what is the missing number in the box? So we're going to find it now. So first, what we have to do is 10.12 divided by 8. So we have to solve this first. So after we solve it, after we do this whole division, we will get the answer 1.265. The answer is here. However, it does not end here because we still have this one more number, 6.7, and we can't just ignore it. So we have to also complete the number sentence with 6.7. So what I have to do now is 6.7, we have to minus by 1.265. And then we will get the real answer, which is 5.435. So is there any answer here? All right, the answer is C. Next, moving on to question 24. The instruction, the incomplete table 1 shows the watches bought by Rumley. Then the question is calculate the price of a unit of a watch. So let's see the table here. Item watch quantity 9, price per unit is not given and total price is 2150 ringgit and 10 cents. But they did not ask the answer which is the total price. They did not want the total price but they want the unit price which is the price of one watch. So in order to find that, the total price you have to divide by 9. So I already do that and I get the answer 238 ringgit and 90 cents. So the answer is B. Alright, moving on to question 25. Alright, question 25. Diagram 8 shows two rectangles PQTU and QRST. Calculate the total area in centimeter square of the shaded region. So this is diagram 8 and we have to find the area of these two triangles. Alright, so first I started by finding the area of these small triangles. But we can't just find it like that. So we have to divide the whole rectangle into several parts. So how I find it is first by finding this one small rectangle here. 
So 4 cm times 2 cm. How I get 4 is because this whole line here is 10 cm. However, 6 cm is this part. But I just want to find the area of this small part here. This small part. So 10 cm minus 6 cm. Here I will get 4 cm. So 4 cm times 2 cm. I will get 8 cm squared. However, a triangle is half a rectangle. So we have to divide by 2. So we will get the real answer for this small triangle. The area is 4 cm squared. Let's move on to the bigger triangle here. So how do we find it? It's first by, we have to multiply 6 cm with 6 cm. So how we get 6 cm first is because here is 6 cm, this whole length here, and we're going to find this length, this whole part. Let me just show you this whole part. Okay, and then one more 6 cm, how I got it is because 8 minus 2, we will get 6. So 6 times 6, I will get 36. However, as I said just now, a triangle is half a rectangle or a square. So which means 36 divided by 2 and I will get 18 centimeters square. But it does not end here. It is because they want the total area. So we have to plus both of them. So 18 centimeters square plus 4 cm square, we will get 22 cm square. So we know the answer is A, 22 cm square. So 25, the answer is A. Okay, question 26. Diagram 9 shows the map. So this is the map and also diagram 9. Sam cycles to the bookshop using the shortest route and returns using the longest route. Calculate the total distance in kilometer of Sam's journey. Alright, so first we have to identify which one is the longest route and which one is the shortest route. So that will be easier for us to count. But then, some of us will just see this whole map and think, oh, this is 3.75, which means this must be the shortest route. And then this is 4 km, so this is supposed to be the longest route. But actually, it's wrong. Because, as you see here, Sam wants to travel from his house to the bookshop. Which means, if he follow this route, he has to pass through the school. So, 3.75 km plus 450 meter, it would be a longer distance. A longer distance than 4 km. Alright, let's see this upper route here. In order for Sam to come to the bookshop, he has to go through the post office, which means 3.9 km we have to plus with 600 meter, and that will be also longer than 4 km, which means 4 km is the shortest route, and the longer route would be this route, because we have to plus 3.9 km with 600 meter which would produce a longer length. So now we know which one is the shortest route and longer route, we can start solving the question. So first, Sam cycled the bookshot using the shortest route, which means he used this route, the 4 km route. But then he returned using the longer route, which means this one, 603.9 km, this whole triangle here, which means we have to just plus all of them together. So first, 400 meter plus 600 meter, which is this, 4 kilometer, which means the 400 meter, plus 600. And then we get 4,600 meter. And then we also have to plus another 3.9 kilometer or 300 or 3,900 meter to go to Sam's house. So we will get the answer 8,500 meter. You can also plus them all in one, but 
this will, this will be more systematic? So the answer is C, 8.5 kilometer. So once we got the answer 8,500 meter, don't forget to convert it to kilometer again and then we'll get 8.5 kilometer. So the answer is C. All right, question 27. So this question is kind of easy, but we have to know the angle. So let's first read the instruction. Diagram 10 shows a right angle triangle PQR. State the value of angle M. So first we have to know this kind of right angle always should be 90 degree. So they have already given us this is 30 degree. So in order to find M, 90 minus 30, we will get 60 degrees. So the answer is B. Alright, we're almost there. We're in question 28. So let's read the question. 1 in 10 gives 1 over 3 of the cake to her neighbours. Her son eats 1 over 6 of the cake. What is the fraction of the remaining cake? So first of all, we have to find the fraction of the cake made by Pon Intan. So, one cake. So, Pon Intan made one cake. And the one cake consists of six pieces. Okay, as you see here, they have wrote here one over three and one over six. So, we're going to choose the biggest denominator to minus easily. So, it's six. So, six over six. So, we just assume that one cake contains six pieces. So, first now, what we have to do is, point in turn gives 1 over 3 of the cake to our neighbors. So 6 over 6 minus 1 over 3. So we will get 4 over 6, but it does not end here. Because her son eats 1 over 6 from the cake. So the remaining cake is already 4 over 6. And then the son eats another 1 over 6. So when we minus, we get 3 over 6. And we can simplify it. So we will get... 1 over 2. And the answer is D. Question 29 to 30. Alright, question 29. 4.95 plus 5, 9 over 100. So 4.95 is this. And how do we change this fraction to a decimal? Okay, so 5, whole number, we can just write 5 there. Now let's put decimal point. Since 100 has two zeros, we put two space here, and then 9, then we put 0, 9. So we get this. So now, 4.95 plus 5.09 will get 10.04. So the answer is B, 10.04. And the last question, which of the following is the best estimation for the height of a classroom door? So this is just like a logical question because we can just assume it. So 20 centimeter is too short to be a classroom door. And 0 0.2 kilometer, which is 200 meter, will be too long. Mm, 20 millimeter, too, too, too short. So the correct length or height would be C, 2 meter. So we are done doing. 30 questions. 30 questions answer is C. 2 meter. Okay everyone, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 4 where we are going to discuss question 31 to question 40. Stay tuned for that. And don't forget to subscribe, turn post notification and give this video a big thumbs up. Bye!